<clears throat> welcome friends. We're gonna do another uh, story check with Sergio. So welcome. Let me get this get this going for Instagram. All right, cool. So if you guys are at the right place, we're gonna do some uh, some story chat. And I'm at my welcome to my studio. I'm right at my drawing desk. And let me see if I can adjust the. Uh, there we go. I know the like auto exposure might be freaking out a little bit. I do seem a little bit dark on Facebook, right? But uh, I wanted you guys to see my drawing board, and hopefully you can see uh, what's going on there. So basically, uh, I wanted to talk about some things that we can be working on as we're like on this lockdown and some downtime. It's there's a lot of things that we can do to take advantage of the time. So one thing I think that a lot of people complain about is that they never have time to do any projects. They never have time to get ahead. They never have time to study. So this is something that I think will really help uh, in just everybody in general if we're actually sitting down and focusing, working on our projects and working on our skills. So there's no excuse anymore, right? The fact that we were like on the corona lockdown, let's take advantage of that time and make something of it. There are a couple of cool questions that came up uh, last time. And because of this, uh, I wanted to address a little bit of that. So some things that we can work on for our portfolio. That's kind of one of the things I wanted to talk about. So first of all, uh, let me introduce a couple of things um, about like what, what I'm doing here. <laughs> so hopefully you can see a little bit of this. These are, um, these are some sketches that I do kind of as warm-up and also just as general designs, right? Like um, some of this are, are just some kind of compositional ideas and uh, let me see if I can, I'll pull this, uh, this camera a little bit closer so you can see that, right? Hopefully, let me adjust the exposure. So there's a little bit of that, um, some compositional ideas, some character studies, and I often do like a lot of doodles, right? Uh, let me put this back down so everybody can, can see on both streams. And this is uh, but really just to get, get me warmed up and get some ideas going. So you don't have to feel like you are trying to make a finished, um, you know, finished storyboard, a finished illustration, or any of that right from the get-go. You can just sit down, let yourself explore, and draw. Now, it doesn't have to be on a drawing board either. You can do this in your sketchbook. You can do this digitally in front of your Wacom or on your iPad. You can do, even do this on your phone. I've had people send me drawings that they've done with their finger on their smartphone. So that's pretty cool, everybody being really resourceful with the tools that they have, okay? Just pencil and paper, something similar. Um, very, very simple stuff. And again, there's like compositional studies. I write notes about things and I'm just working out ideas and these things will eventually get into actually, uh, you know, a sequence that I'm gonna create for that, which I'll get to some of those tips about what to do that. Um, uh, later on. So as you can see, I'm thinking about like beat boards. So hopefully you guys can see a little bit of this. Let's see if I can get this camera a little bit closer and um, and you can see what what I'm working on. And uh, they're, they're just rough exploratory sketches. It's really to get the, the juices flowing. That's, that's all it is. Sometimes I draw on the front and the back. Let me show you some of the warm-ups that I do. Here we go. <laughs> so sometimes I'll do like these ellipses and just like sit down here and draw and I'll show you that in a second but it's really about um, uh, it's, it's really just about that hand-eye coordination the pencil mileage and getting that stuff going okay um, some of the things I was working on today were some of these designs for uh, for an alien project that I'm working on and it's just coming up with some shapes and some designs for um, from for some characters in the film so I, these are not meant to be finished character designs. In fact, what I would do here, they're kind of exploratory ideas. What I would do here is use these as thumbnails and I'm gonna go ahead and put these characters into a pose that's a storytelling pose. That kind of stuff uh, I think really is helpful when it comes to doing uh, visual storytelling, that you're not just doing this rigid uh, kind of turnaround drawing when you're doing characters, you actually do uh, something that's representative of what the character emotion would be, what the character is. So put that character into a pose. So, so again, these are just exploratory stuff, so I haven't gotten to that point yet, okay? <laughs> so um, little scribbles and scratches here. Some of the stuff is a lot unfinished, but I'm working out my ideas. It's all just about um, just getting it out there, and that's it, making, making it appear on paper or digital, whatever you're doing. And then from there, you can go and create something, clean it up, put it on another layer, and then tighten up those lines, right? Um, so basically, I want to show you this. 
So you don't you don't you don't get so precious with your images that you, you don't have to show this to anybody necessarily. Even if you're in an office setting or you're working with a group, you can you can work on your ideas and just work those through. When you actually have to present it to somebody, that's when you like tighten up a little bit, you might add a couple tones and some color and give it a little punch. Okay. So um, that's that's basically it. So let me let me go ahead and I'll do a little demo. I'll just see if this works out. Uh, can you see this stroke? It's a little light. Let me use a different pen here. So I'm gonna use a I'm gonna use a sharpie. Yeah. Okay. So uh, a couple of things to to think about and and tips when you're doing visual storytelling stuff. So one, always draw with a bounding box. You want that frame. So it's that 16 by 9 frame that you want to be drawing with, and that's what you're gonna you're gonna have as the the boundaries of your composition. So I see some people they they kind of just like they'll draw a character, and there's nothing like holding it back. And you, you start putting in like landscape stuff. You might add some trees or whatever here, but then you don't know if you're if you're framing this whole thing here, or if you just want it to be tight on this character. So what I recommend is you start from the box first, and it helps to have some templates uh, already set up. So you can do this in Photoshop or whatever kind of program you're using. If I'm on pencil and paper in my sketchbook, I'm gonna do that first with just a frame. So then when I go in there and I'll figure out, okay, I wanna have, let's say, a medium close-up on a character, and do I want him in the center? Do I want him on, on screen left? Do I want the character on screen right? So uh, that you have to decide right away, and you just kind of just kind of go with it. So again, these are, Thumbnails, don't make it so precious, and then you just draw something. Here, I'll just draw like an outline of a character's face. And, you know, medium close up, there's a lot, it's a wide angle lens, there's probably a lot of room here. And you get that. And so, since there's, there's room for background, what I could do is probably simplify this, draw a couple of lines, maybe get some landscape in here. Maybe there's like a mountain range, right? And, uh, you know, a couple of bushes or something in the background. But there's nothing really that's going to take away from the focal point of this character. So in just very simple terms, I'm blocking this character out and, and not trying to get too uh, crazy with uh, detail right now. Okay, so and I can go in here, I'm just going to use another um, a pencil, it's a Prisma pencil. I'm just going to shade, put some light and tone on this character, pop him out. Okay, so that hopefully, let's see if I can... Center that a little bit more for you guys. It's just something to get get your Jesus phone get that quick, okay? Um, what other tips I want to give you? So a lot of times I was telling you about, about horizontal and vertical lines. So this is one thing I see a lot of. Every time when you draw a character, you're going to draw like the background, and they might be up against like a window frame or something, and it's perfectly horizontal, perpendicular to the picture plane, which is the bounding box of your frame. And what that does is just creates this rigidity of your composition, right? And so things that I was telling you about um, the last time was just tilting your camera lens. And right from the start, what you can do is you can start creating some visual interest that way. So imagine this were a window frame here, right? And we could have like, you know, character in the foreground here again too. But uh, let's say everything is tilted a little bit and it's, it's, it's off Kilter just with that, even though we're flat straight on to that windowsill, we got a little bit of a Dutch angle on this. You know, let's say there's like curtains or something. Here, now the character who's still in the frame is like has a little bit that of that Dutch tilt. It creates some visual interest, and you're getting, you know, you're getting something right from the get-go just because you, you tilt your camera lens, right? So that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about with with uh, you know creating some visual interest and just simple tricks that you can do there. Okay, so getting back to the point of what you should be studying as we're doing in this downtime is a couple of things to recommend for your portfolio. So I see people have really good illustrations, they have really nice uh, characters and drawings and that kind of stuff, but it's the storytelling, it's the sequential art from one image to the next that's important. So one thing you want to be working on in your portfolio and thinking about is how can you put these things into a sequence? So I would recommend you guys who are doing these like Instagram challenges or any kind of uh, challenge online with groups and drawing groups out there to think about a sequence that you can do. Now I throw out a, a bunch of things like on the, in the visual story course, one of the examples was uh, Captain America and Superman sit down and have a coffee. That's one of the assignments, okay? 
and it's open-ended like that so you can go and, and uh, come up with anything and actually that, that assignment is is meant to be short and quick just doing beat boards and really just fleshing out what the major beats are in that sequence but imagine what's going on there and this is where it becomes a staging exercise in the sense that you have two characters who are uh, different people right Superman uh, is physically bigger than Captain America right and they have different special superpowers like what would they talk about and if they sit down at a coffee shop to have coffee what would go on there right so are they flirting with the waitress do uh, do they arm wrestle is there a rivalry between the two characters you can do anything in fact some people I, uh, some of the assignments that they turned in um, on on our visual storytellers united facebook group i thought were really cool uh, one one artist put uh, the characters uh, on a like on a rooftop basically on the outside of a, a big skyscraper building and uh, and Superman was there and then um, Captain America was sitting there with the coffee on a ledge and one thing that, that came to mind there is how about you make Superman uh, kind of floating horizontal uh, to the to the skyscraper so he has that power he can he can basically fly right he can float whatever he wants to do so you could have him just walking um, you know up and down the building and then you'd have Captain America at a different angle sitting normally horizontal on, on the skyscraper, right? So there's a lot of things you can do with staging just inherent in the two characters. That's something if you flesh that out and you create a sequence and it actually goes where you can, if you're happy with that result, you can put that in your portfolio and then, um, and then you got a sample and that's just one. So that could take, you know, that, that's meant to be done in the visual story course. It's meant to be done within a week or so. Um, in fact, faster because we're just you know, doing thumbnails and knocking out ideas. But if you want to flesh that out even more and spend more time on it, you can go ahead and do that and that will be a, a cool piece for your portfolio. So think about that. That might be a comedy thing uh, in that particular case with Superman and uh, Captain America. You could also make it an action sequence and then you have something that's a little more dramatic with, uh, you know, with dynamic angles and that stuff. That's a different type of sample that you can put in your portfolio. Uh, I recommend doing a variety of that stuff. You want to show the studios and anybody who's looking at your work as a story artist that you can handle drama that you can handle uh, characters you can handle comedy you can handle action stuff you, you want to hit all the major genres now I also recommend that you uh, you tailor it to what you are good at right to your strengths but then um, but but then after that you want to show them what you're really into and that you can do a variety of things that you have a range as an artist so I'll bring some of this stuff up. Let me show you, um, I'll leave this up in the background. Oh, check this out. So I mentioned to you guys I was doing uh, anatomy studies. Can you see that? Let me bring that a little bit closer to the camera. So there are a few things that, um, that I'm working on, particularly the upper back muscles and then the underarm area where you got the teres major and the teres muscles and then the tricep. Uh, for those of you who know your anatomy, you know what I'm talking about, is that the tricep, uh, that connects to the scapula under the teres muscles. So I just, you know, working on these things and make sure that you're constantly building up your, your visual memory and, and working on your skills. That's what we want to be doing um, always with our like dojo training. Like there is a, there's a disciplined nature about what we're doing to get better as an artist. All right, cool. So let me, um, we're live on, on both Facebook and Instagram. And I want to, I want to put a shout out to the guys in uh, Instagram because I, I I love the, the question and interaction that we get going on there. So if you guys have any questions or anything, just go ahead and chime that in, and we'll take that um, to you. All right, man, it's great to see everybody. That's awesome. And uh, when it comes to doing portfolio things, here's the other thing is don't stress out so much about it. What you have to do is just go through the motions and create something. Have a book that's going to be your first version, right? And then start showing that to people. And then you're going to get feedback on it. And then when you get uh, the feedback, you go ahead and you correct that. The other thing that you can do too is if you actually um, submit it to studios is you want to, as much as possible, see if you can connect with the people inside those studios to get feedback on the work that you submitted. Because it, a lot of times you, you submit something and it goes out there in the void. And if you don't have an idea about why uh, you never got a call back, that can be just heartbreaking because you don't understand, you know, what you need to be improving on or what you need to work on. Okay, so that is um, that's something just to keep in mind that there's a networking component to this, and and also that you know it, it's a process. So you do a couple portfolio versions, you accumulate your work, you submit it, and see if you get some feedback. 
And if you have stuff that's really interesting, then people will start giving you a call. One, one of the great uh, reactions that I have now is um, the mentorship group was, we, had, we started a mentorship program back in 2018, and we led a really awesome group of artists through different exercises to build up their portfolio. And now I'm starting to hear from people who are submitting things and getting some callbacks. And it gets really exciting for me to see because I know these guys have talent. And I know that they are strong artists because we've been working on things and, and we've all been improving as a group. And uh, these guys are now putting themselves out there and, and getting some really good results. So that's that's really nice uh, to hear. Uh, cool. So we've got some questions here. Hey, Sumit Mandre, what's up, my friend? Good to see you again. Um, how to think of creative editing in storyboarding. Okay, uh, that's a really great question. So, uh, for, so for one, for people who don't know, there is an editing component to doing storyboards because you're kind of pre-editing a sequence or a film by laying it out in drawings and actually doing image by image and sequence uh, for for whatever it is that you're working on. So it, when, in ter when in terms of creative editing, uh, I, I like to think of this that you can do this in a number of ways. There's the linear way where you start from A and you go all the way to B, right? Just a straight line. But there's uh, there's a couple ways to think about it too, is that if you jump from different subjects or different people, you can actually start uh, creating kind of some, some time warps or sort of some different threads that go in and out of your sequence. And you kind of go A to C to D to F and then all the way back to B, right? So you kind of have this weird uh, traveling loop through your sequence. And one thing I, I recommend when you do that is probably just looking at a lot of film reference, looking at things that you really want to um, to emulate or to pay homage to, and these are, uh, you know, the movies that you like is basically kind of what's going to be in, in your arsenal and your memory banks for what to do. And I have a lot of that stuff. Like, you know, I grew up in the '80s, so it's like '80s action movies and and you know the fun stuff like The Breakfast Club and uh, John, you know, John Hughes movies and uh, uh, you know John Carpenter movies. All of that stuff is kind of in my in my brain, and I like I like a lot. A variety of films, but then I'll look at that and say, okay, how did they actually construct this and put it together? And uh, you know, guys like Scorsese that we all know, who's a big uh, director, uh, he'll do some things to change it up and add music cues and, and really make things exciting. So check out some really good films and understand that that can be something you can um, that can get you into your into your groove when it comes to editing and, and coming up with conceptualizing the ideas for your sequence. All right, cool. That was great. Let me. Ask another question. Animation Diva, how are you? Great to see you again. Okay, uh, how do I clean up my boards without noodling too much? <laughs> you know, the best answer to that is uh, is really setting a time limit. The the having a deadline will give you what you need to get the job done. Okay, so if you're sitting there and you're like just going over and over again on the same sketch and and you're like um, and you're not committing to your drawing, the fastest way to solve that problem is knowing that you'd like within a week or two, you have to turn in and the, the deadlines are absolute. You can't miss a deadline. You, know, you got to be a professional and turn in your work. So with that, uh, it will really make you commit and get your work done. So what I do there is I calculate the amount of time I have by the amount of storyboards I need to create because I've stum I thumbnailed them all out and I know exactly how many boards I need for a particular sequence, I divide that number of boards by the amount of time I have. And I know exactly to the minute how much time, or you know, it's an average, right? But the average minute I need per panel that I can work on, or per shot, I usually do it per shot. So let's say I have to do like 10 or, uh, you know, sometimes 15 shots a day, that's a lot. But on average, I could do about 10 shots a day and you know, if you divide that by eight hours a day, you're looking about you know a little less than an hour for each shot. You know, give or take because you take lunch, you take breaks, and that kind of thing. So maybe half an hour to 40 minutes on each shot, and a shot can include many poses and, and many panels for that one particular shot. Now with digital tools, it goes faster because you can duplicate things and get that going. But uh, yeah, d don't be noodling on stuff. Get it done. Commit. Make a decision. And commit to it and get that out the door. So that's one way to actually make this thing and, and do it do it well, right? Cool, great question. That's that's something that comes up too. I always get that question. It's like, how long does it take you to do a storyboard? How long does it take you to do a drawing? There's no right answer. I could do a drawing and spend weeks on it, right? Like a painting, I could spend months on like an illustration or some kind of full painting. 
But when it comes to doing a storyboard and I have a deadline, I have a sequence, if I get a, an, a specific number of script pages to do in a week, then I really have to motor through and burn through these uh, storyboard images. And, you know, on average, I could probably, on average, I'm probably doing about 40 to 50 panels per day, which, um, you know, I don't know, that's just an average. I don't know if that seems like a lot or not. It's, it's probably, you know, for most people, it's probably surprising that you can only do 40 panels. But again, if you think about it in an eight hour day, and you break it down per hour, you could probably only do two or three panels in an hour. It just it takes time to like, you know, correct something, to draw over again, fix it, commit to it, export it, all that stuff takes a lot of time. Um, you know, I have done up to like a hundred panels a day, uh, just because I'm like I really have to burn through. But what happens is the quality level, the, the simplification uh, starts to increase. So I'm not doing as much detail, things get a lot looser, a lot simpler, and then that's where I, you know, I start um, uh, kind of cutting corners to get the job done. Now, I don't sacrifice clarity. I don't sacrifice the storytelling because that always is paramount. I have to keep that 100% all the time. Like it has to be clear and it has to tell the story. So those are the main things. But what I can sacrifice maybe is some of the tones and some of like the finished line work. And I just start burning through that. You do that enough. And then, you know, to go back to the previous question, it's like you will figure out how to commit to line work and get really efficient with stuff and just not noodle around because you have a deadline. You have to get it done. Okay. Um, so that's, that speed thing is a funny question that comes up a lot. Now, there are other guys that only do maybe five or ten panels a day, uh, and they're, they're putting a lot more detail into it. And this is something you might be working in advertising boards. You might be doing live-action film which they want a little more detail and some camera indications and render up your images a little bit more. So it's all relative. And some guys are really fast and some guys take uh, more time to do your drawings. The main thing is to make sure that your quality is always there, that you're never sacrificing quality. I say this too, that uh, nobody ever remembers how fast you did something. They always remember how well you did it. Okay, so turn in the best quality work that you can. All right, cool. Um, all right, another question from Submit. Let's see, can you share your studio experience and how and when um, you develop most? That, you know, that's a great question. Let me, um, let me think about that while I take a sip of water here. Is, um, I, usually this is how it goes. When you, when you start out as a young artist in a studio, you, have, you probably have some drawing skills. They probably see something that has potential in your work. And then when you go and you start, um, you're going to start learning from others and, and getting into the groove of doing the production thing. There's a technical hurdle they have to get over. Um, and that, you know, technical as far as like the pipeline and learning what kind of style it is on the production. So you may not be that fast with software or with that particular pipeline. So you learn that and that's usually the easiest thing to learn. The next thing on top of that is you have to get better at your storytelling. And hopefully you're in an environment where there are other people that can motivate you and mentor you and push you to do some quality work. So it can be a, a really high, in, highly intense and high, like high pressure environment um, if you're just first getting in. So that first year or two, uh, you know, consider that as like your your rookie year, so to speak, to like references back to sports. And you know, you're gonna have some growth. Hopefully, you can still contribute to the project. That's why they have you there. Um, to you know, contribute ideas and get something done, you have to be working constantly on your technique and your skills. And that usually happens in the first five years or so. And um, now that might seem like a long time if you go, oh man, you know, I, I went to school, I you know, spent all this money and I've studied and then I have to spend another five years working once I become a pro. Yeah, that, you do. You have to learn the ropes. And you know, back to the sports analogy, think of like rookie athletes who go to the big leagues they're not amazing right away. Maybe a few couple people um, you know, who are superstars can get in there, but then after a while what you have to do is you have to grow and evolve and become a veteran because you learn from other people. When you do this, uh, that's when you start getting into your groove and usually after like five years, uh, you, you start to understand what is required of you to create a sequence and what the director's like and how, what your own personal style is. And I think that's where the growth really kicks in. So in this idea of learning uh, for life, right? As a story artist, you don't just like suddenly take a couple classes and then you're, you know, you're awesome. You know, that's not the way it works. You know, even if you come to storyboard art and we have the mentorship and we're guiding you to create something really awesome, 
you know, you have to do the work. There's no shortcut. You have to put in the time and actually improve yourself and go through the motions. So that's how all artists get better. And, um, and that usually kicks in after at least five years of professional work. And then by about five to 10 years, you become like a, like a journeyman, a veteran. You, know, you have some experience under your belt. And usually about the 10-year mark, you know what to do at least. And then you can really take it up to there. And you might be able to um, you know, have a little more responsibility because you understand what is required of you in the production. At, at any rate, you really need to keep on learning no matter what. You're studying film. You're learning from other people. You're learning from the veterans. You're learning from the other uh, production people, directors and producers and writers, and then you're going to become a really strong artist. And that's how you create a career out of what it is that you're doing. Okay. <laughs> so awesome. These are great questions. Um, let me take a couple more and then uh, we'll sign off for now. But um, so, hey, cool. Let me, did I, did I miss one up here? Give me a second as I scroll through the feed here. Krugers, hey buddy, how are you? All right. Um, do you recommend applying to revisionist jobs uh, for that rookie year? Uh, yes, actually. <laughs> so, uh, what Krugers referring to here is um, there's usually d different levels that you can apply to. Now, revisionists are usually um, that's usually like in TV animation. There's a lot of big turnarounds, so they have guys. Who are let's say the, the the main story artists and the seasoned guys, and they, they rough out a sequence, they'll pass it off to you as a revisionist, and you go ahead and you clean it up. That's uh, usually how that works. Um, one recommendation though is that in applying as a revisionist, I wouldn't necessarily target uh, your portfolio as a revisionist. I would show them story work. At least I like to see that as a director. I want to see that people can be can be thinking artists. They have skills, and they know how to draw. And then you know you might enter as a revisionist because that's the only position that's available, or maybe you don't have enough experience. So then you have good drawings, but then they're not, you know, they they can't. Um, uh, you haven't proven yourself as a story artist. So what you have to, as a you know normal journeyman story artist, so what you have to do is you enter as a revisionist, and then you prove yourself there. And that's kind of way to get your foot in the door. So yeah, I would recommend applying to that. Um, but in your portfolio that you do, don't just show cleanup drawings from like what you. Uh, essentially revised and cleaned up from other people's work. You might show a couple examples of that, but what I would show is your storytelling, your your quality drawing, your perspective, and know that you have really good art skills. Because if you have really good art skills, you can most likely work really well as a revisionist, right? Um, that's how you, you do that. So one way to to get there is just to apply as a story artist, and if they don't have any uh, positions available, they might suggest to you if you're interested in doing a revision revisionist position. So I would go for the story artist position first, because you never know. You might actually get that story artist, story artist position, maybe as an entry-level story artist, but at least you're doing sequence work and narrative storytelling right from the get-go, instead of have to clean up other people's work uh, there. But hey, work is work, right? So if you, if you land a job and you're happy with that, you know, uh, that's great. You know, when I started out, I, I started out as a cleanup animator, right? A cleanup artist as well. I did a little bit of animation. I actually got uh, hired as like a, a junior or entry-level uh, animator. And they gave me a little bit of animation work, and they gave me like mostly cleanup work, right? And I was happy to do any of that. I was just really overjoyed to be <laughs> working at <it> all, <laughs> right? Uh, so cool. Um, yeah, the idea with that is that you get you get more experience, and then uh, you start improving yourself, and that way, uh, with the next job and the next job, uh, you can move on up to different levels, and then that's how you start and you get a career out of it. Okay. Well, cool. I think with that question, this is probably a good spot to end it. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with these little story chats. We'll post this to uh, to our social media. Check us out at storyboardart.org, and also um, you can see the links for the Vision Story Course and some of the other things that we have uh, to go. Uh, we want everybody at least, you know, that stuff is free. So we want everybody at least to get their feet wet with storyboard stuff. And if you haven't done any visual storytelling yet, Man, go for it. Try that stuff. See if you like it. You never know. You might be pretty awesome uh, with your ideas and your storytelling. And the world really needs good stories, right? I mean, how many times have we watched films and movies and shows and, and we want to contribute something? 
And so this could be your chance to check us out and some of those resources. So comment on um, this when you see it posted and let us know if, if you like these chats or if there's any questions that you want us to answer and we'll take it from there. All right, fellas, thanks for that. We'll see you soon. And then for you Facebook guys, it's, uh, it's also a pleasure to, to have you on here, and we'll see you next time. Okay, take care.